When building a big bore engine, sometimes the cylinder skirt is too large to fit in the cases. Here I'm showing a 54mm bore cylinder with stock 49cc Minarelli two-stroke clone cases. Not even close to fitting. The cases can be clearanced with a rotary tool or drill when cutting bits. A machinist could do it. Or there are tools made for boring engine cases to fit larger cylinders. I've done all of mine in the past with a drill or rotary tool, but I picked up this Universal Parts Case Boring Tool, which currently seems to be branded as SSPG, for about $150 to try on a 54mm bore 1E40 QMB build. It comes with the boring tool holder that has a bolt pattern to fit the GY6 125 or 150 engines, and another set of holes that works with both the 139 QMB and horizontal Minarelli engines. The bearing in the center allows the fly cutter to rotate freely while being supported. The fly cutter has five grooves on one end that allow a snap ring to be used as an adjustable stop and a section that allows it to be chucked into a drill. The cutting end holds a bit and the two bolts that hold the bit and allow adjustment and an allen key is provided for the bolts. The cutting bit comes dipped in wax for protection, but it's easily peeled away. The included M8 by 1.25 studs work for GY6 engines, which the tool is tailored to out of the box, but will not work with the 139 QMB and Minarelli engines, which have M7 by 1.0 threaded holes for cylinder studs. I made a set of four studs for the boring tool with a lathe to use for my two-stroke. Here are the dimensions in case anyone wishes to make their own. You could also use a threaded rod with roughly the same overall length and spacers or washers of a similar height. Whatever you do, the spacing needs to be as even as possible on all four studs so the tool can be set up true and doesn't cut into the cases at an angle. The cutting bit was another issue for my application. I needed to cut a 57mm diameter, but the cutting bit was too long for this. The smallest cut that it would do as made was 665 millimeters. I cut the bit down to a length of 35 millimeters, which would allow a bore range from about 52.5 millimeters to 62 millimeters that seems more useful for 49cc based engines. If larger bore diameters were ever needed, replacement bits are sold under part number 202-45 or other 516 inch square shank cutters could be used. The bolts provided to adjust and hold the cutting bit into the tool were also an issue for me. Their heads were so large that they could hit the cases before the cutting bit when cutting at smaller diameters. I made my own set and adjustment bolts by cutting the heads off of a couple of M8 by 1.25 bolts that I had around. I used a hacksaw to make a slot in one end of each so a flat screwdriver could be used with them. That covers the modifications made, so now let's look at the cutting process. I started out by bolting my case halves together and installing all four studs so they were snug up against the cases. Then I slid the tool support over the studs and tightened it down. I wanted to make sure it could be set up parallel with the cases, because a misalignment would cause the angle of the cut to change. I measured the distance from the top of the tool holder down to the cylinder mating surface of the case all the way around. Three of the holes are easily done as shown. The lower hole didn't align well with the cylinder mating surface, so I put a steel ruler across the cases and measured down to it. Then I measured the thickness of the ruler and added that to the measurement. All of them came out within a small fraction of a millimeter, so it worked for me. It could be fine-tuned by using shims or modifying the spacers if needed. Then I moved on to setting the fly cutter or center section of the tool up so it would cut the diameter that I wanted. I measured the OD of the skirt of the cylinder that I wanted to use in a couple of places, and it came out just under 57 millimeters so I used 57 millimeters as my target cutting diameter. Then I needed to figure out how to set the tool up to cut my desired diameter. I measured the diameter of the end of the fly cutter, which was 34.49 millimeters, and I rounded it up to 34.5 for simplicity since I didn't require accuracy to a hundredth of a millimeter. Even if you use the same tool, I would advise taking your own measurement just in case it's not the same. 
If you use the same tool for all of your measurements, that may also increase accuracy. At that point, I knew the bore diameter that I wanted and the diameter of the cutter, so I came up with an equation to find out how to set the cutting bit to achieve the bore diameter. Cutter setting is the measurement across the head of the cutter, including the cutting bit. In my case, to get a 57mm bore diameter, I needed to set my tool to 45.75mm. I started the set and adjustment bolts, and then put the cutting bit in. You must pay attention to the orientation of the cutting bit when installing it, because it only goes in one way for a proper cut. If you look at the end of the bit, you should notice that it has one corner where there's a carbide piece attached and the sides fall away. That corner is the cutting edge, and it needs to be installed so it will face the engine cases as shown. Then I screwed the set screw in to put some pressure on the bit. This sounds a bit backwards, but I found that if I didn't have some tension on the cutting bit, I'd get discrepancies in settings once everything was tightened. The adjustment screw was turned in to push the bit out, with frequent measurement checks, until it was at the desired setting. Once there, I tightened the set screw, made sure the adjustment screw was snug, and verified that the bit was still set how I wanted it. Then I slid the cutter into the holder as shown, and installed and tightened the assembly onto the cases. I checked the height of the tool above the cases all the way around just as I did earlier to be certain that it was straight. Depth of cut also needs to be known, so I measured from the end of the cylinder skirt to the base of the cylinder that I was using in multiple spots. The highest measurements were around 24.7 millimeters, so I planned to make a 25 millimeter deep cut. I rotated the cutter so the bit was resting against the case. Then I checked where 25 millimeters was above the tool base, and it aligned pretty closely with one of the grooves in the cutter. I installed the supplied snap ring into that groove to act as a stop. Measuring to the bottom of the snap ring showed that it was very close to the 25 millimeter depth that I was looking for. If you can't get the depth that you want using just the snap ring grooves, you can use washers or shims to achieve the depth that you're after. The shaft is 20 millimeters, so washers will need to be about 20 millimeters or 13 16 ID. At this point, the tool is set up and ready to cut. If you have any doubt about any measurements or settings, recheck before going any further. I tighten the cutter into a drill, which needs to have a half inch capacity chuck. Take another look at the cutting bit to determine the direction of rotation for your drill. In my case, the drill was set forward, or clockwise. The cutter should be spun at a high RPM, but with a low feed rate and letting the tool do the work instead of trying to force it through. Sometimes the cutter can hang up and make it difficult to move smoothly, but I found that spraying WD-40 on the shaft helped to avoid hang up and make cutting easier. I also used WD-40 sprayed onto the case or bit as I went. I found that the cases needed to be secured to make the process easier and safer, so I clamped them to my workbench. Don't use a lot of pressure and risk cracking the case. A little more than halfway through, the cutter came to a sudden stop and wouldn't move. Upon inspection, I found that the cutting bit was no longer in the cutter. I made my own set screws, so I assumed this was my fault, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to periodically stop and check the fasteners and the drill chuck when cutting. I thought maybe I should use the included bolt for the set screw instead of the one I made because I could tighten it more. Maybe I was wrong about it making contact. I went through the whole setup process again. When I tried to cut, the tool just wanted to bounce. Turns out I was right the first time and the bolt is too large, so I set it all up again using the set screw that I made. The rest of the cut went well, and I kept going until the snap ring prevented me from going any further.
I removed the tool and cleaned out the casing. Then I installed the cylinder studs and made sure the cylinder would fit. I ended up with a pretty nice fit, but there was almost no room or possibly very minor contact at the cylinder skirt bottoms because of the depth of cut. I set it all up once more using a washer and a different groove to cut about a half a millimeter deeper. Then it looked good to me. I had a little bit of room between the case and the skirts, so I could be certain that they wouldn't contact before the base and cause any sealing issues, even if I were to use no base gasket. Cutting doesn't take too long, just a matter of minutes once the tool is ready to go. It's the setup that takes a while, especially with a smaller engine like this and having to modify or replace hardware. I've built quite a few big board stroker Minarelli engines, and I would say that if I were only doing one, I'd probably just do the clearance work with a rotary tool. It could be done in less time overall, and without the expense of the cutter. I think that the cutter would be much more beneficial for long term use, or building more than one engine. If you have a GY6150, then you don't have all the hardware issues, so the main concern would be the cost. It does do a more precise job than I do freehanding with rotary tools. That could be especially helpful with engines like the GY6 where you may be dealing with very thin walls. Overall, I like the tool, and I think it may be worth checking out depending on the circumstance. Thanks for watching, and please like, share, and subscribe for more.